For the ones that I haven't met, my name is Pastor Robert. I'm the associate pastor. Uh, my brother, Pastor Marco, he, um, he's a senior pastor. He's out in Hawaii at a conference um, there and hanging out with his wife as well. Um, they're having a good time out there. But I'm so happy to be with you guys. And um, let's talk about mamas for a minute. I, I, I talked to Pastor Marco a few days ago. If you have your notepads, you can pull them out or your phones or tablets. We won't be long. I want to respect your time because I know the restaurants are insane today. How many have reservations already? There are no reservations, huh? I tried to call Hilltop. They said, we're not doing reservations. I said, how do you guys do it? It's just first come, first serve. I said, oh, my gosh. So I'm going to respect your time. You're going to have enough time, I promise you, to go cook your... How many having barbecue? Anybody having barbecue today? Anybody have barbecue? You guys, how many, anybody cooking ribs? Send me your address, ma'am. I'll stop by your house around 2 o'clock, get some ribs. But I was talking to Pastor Mark up a few days. I said, Pastor Mark, what do you want to talk about? He said, why don't you honor our mom? Talk about mama. And I said, oh, I would love to. I would love to talk about my mom. Um, me and Pastor Marco's mom, for the ones that don't know, um, she did pass away. Um, it's about a week. About, uh, no, another week, huh? It would be two years. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I miss my mom to death. Oh, I love her. I miss her. Kids, if you have a mama that's still alive... Hang out as much as you can with your mama. But our mom passed away, um, yeah, it'll be two years, and I miss her. I think, um, I don't know, maybe once a week, I'll just sit there and cry. My wife doesn't even know at times. I'm just in the car, and I just cry. I miss calling. She's call, her calling me. How many ever got a call from my mom? She had a dream about you. <laughs> she used to call Mondo too. Mondo, I... Got to talk to you. I miss those moments. I miss um, this morning. The first thing I would do would just call her. And she lived in Florida in her last years. When, when she got sick, um, she, she lived here in California with us. But for the most part, um, for 30-something years, she lived in Florida. And we, we'd call her all the time. So if it's okay with you, I have a title today, What Mommy Taught Me. Go ahead. You can laugh. Yeah, I used to call my mom Mommy. I, and here, here's another thing. Pastor Marco called her mommy too all the time. It'd be funny. We'd be in the car. Hey, mommy. Hey, mommy. Two grown men calling mom mommies. My, my, my wife, she goes, oh, you guys still call her mommy? Yeah, we still call her mommy. So if I can, I want to give you five things that my mom taught me. Is that okay if I do that today? So again, what mommy taught me. Let me give you five things what she taught me and Pastor Marco. Number one, my mom taught me how to serve God and serve others. My mom taught me the greatest commandments in the Bible. Turn with me to Matthew twenty two thirty six. 36. Matthew 22, verse 36. So what did mama taught me? She taught me how to serve God. She taught me how to serve others. Look at Matthew twenty two thirty six. 36. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and all the prophets, they hang on these two commandments. The greatest thing that my mommy taught me is how to serve God. She taught me to give everything to God. Don't hold on to nothing, Robert. If you're going to serve God, she would tell me, give it your all. Now, I was a late bloomer. Any late bloomers? I'll just say it right now. Pastor Marco, growing up, um, he was the God child. No, literally. No, the golden child. Yeah, seriously. He got saved like at six and never turned back. No, serious. He read the Bible like ten times before he got to sixth grade. He's like just in it, just crazy for God, just, just amazing. High school, carrying his Bible, and just amazing. He was, a, he was awesome. I never seen him, never seen him drink a beer, never, I never seen Pastor Marco cuss. Never, I just, he was just like, he was just a golden child. So we're 10 years apart. I don't know what happened to me. You had like the God child, then you had the devil child. I just, I got kicked out of high school. Oh, there, Davey, one of my good friends. We used to get in trouble, me and you, Davey. I won't go into, I won't go into too many stories because you got your family there. I just noticed, but I won't go on. 
Let me look this way. Let me look this way. Yeah, I, just, I got in trouble in high school. I got kicked out of school. But here's a cool thing. The Bible says how you train up a child, when they get old, they won't depart from it. If you got a problem child right now, you continue serving God. You continue. And my mom, yeah, give it up. Don't give up. But my mom taught it. Rob, you're going to live for God. You got to go all out. There's no compromise. She taught me the fear of God. It was so amazing and sometimes it was scary and bad because if I was, if, if I walked in, let's say my mom was outside, right? And let's say Marco was outside, Pastor Marco. And let's say I was with my friends, happened several times. I would be at my friend's house, my, my mom, Marco, or dad would be outside, whatever. I would go home and I wouldn't see anybody. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the rapture just happened. <laughs> my mom is gone, I got left behind. Oh my gosh, what just happened? And then my mom would come running, I was screaming, oh mama, you're here, Marco, you're here. But you know what it was? It was probably good and bad, but it was good. She taught me how to fear God. She would always say, do you want to be doing that when Jesus comes back? Do you want to be telling a lie when Jesus comes back? Do you want to be smart with me when Jesus comes back? But she taught me how to honor and reverence God. I'm going to say this. The only way to live for God is going 100. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. It doesn't work. My mama taught us that. She served God 100%. She served God um, seven days a week. She didn't just serve God on Sundays. She served God 24-7. She would always tell me, Rob, your, your body belongs to the Lord. You got to be obedient. You got you to serve God. Your body belongs to God. It doesn't belong to you. She, she would always share this scripture with me, 1 Corinthians 6.19. Don't you realize your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you? And was given to you by God. You don't belong yourself. For God bought you with a price. So you must honor God with your body. She would always say that your body doesn't belong to you. Marco, your body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. She taught us how to serve God. And also in that, that, that point number one, she taught us how to serve people. My mom, she always told me and Pastor Marco, there should never be a time that you're not involved in ministry. Never, ever, ever. We were created to serve God and to serve people. So my mom, yeah, give it up, yeah. Serve God and serve people. Growing up, my mom was a Sunday school teacher for years. I think for 30 years, my mom was a Sunday school teacher. Before that, she taught kids ministry. She taught youth ministry. She was at the altar. And every Sunday, she was there at church serving people. I'm going to let you know something. If life, if you're not serving others, life will become really selfish. It will become boring. There's no purpose to it. We are created to serve God and serve people. This is a scripture she would share with me and Marco. 1 Peter 4.10. She would always share this scripture. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Rob, you got gifts. And you better use them to serve people. We serve God and we serve people. And thankfully to this day, man, I'm 40. How old am I now? I don't even know my age anymore. When you pass 40, I guess you don't care anymore. I'm 43, my wife saw you're 43, 43. Here I am, 43, 43 years later, serving people. It's because of mama. So number one, she taught us how to serve God. She taught us how to serve people. Look at number two. My mom taught me to never give up. She taught me to stick it out. Doesn't matter how hard it gets, stick it out. You don't like your boss at work, who cares, stick it out. She always told me this, Robert, everything you start, make sure you finish it. Write that down. Young adult, write that down. Teenager, write that down. Everything you start, you finish. You start a ministry, finish. You start school, finish it. You start a project, finish it. Don't leave things half done. 
And my mom taught me that never give up. 1 Corinthians 9, 24, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Maybe you're struggling right now. You're having a hard time in life. Right? Don't give up. Don't give up on church. Don't give up on ministry. Don't give up on your family. Because in due time, you will reap a harvest. But when we give up, we don't see the harvest. Look at somebody and say, do not give up no matter what. Does life get hard? Does your job get hard? I give it up for my cousin here. She just retired. How many years were you in the, um, the 33 years in the post office? What's going on with the next generation? I don't even want to work anymore with some of these people. My cousin just sent me a, a picture or, they live in Texas because fast foods are hurting right now. Nobody wants to work. Unemployment, you get some money there and stem. They don't want to work, right? You know, I don't know. My cousin, he sends me a sign at Jack in the Box. He says, sorry, um, your, your, your food's going to take a while because nobody wants to work anymore. <laughs> the manager put that on the screen. If there's one thing my mama taught us, we don't give up and we work, we work, we work, we work, we work. So I, my, my daughter, she just turned 16 and she's driving now. Oof. Now she's a great driver. She's doing excellent. She's doing good, right? She, she's good. I got her a car, right? Got her a car. And I told her, okay, we're going to get her a car, but we have to teach her responsibility. Okay, she's a... Sophomore in high school? Sophomore, okay. Oh, she's a junior. She's a sophomore, okay. So I said, we get her a car, but she's going to make half the payment. Well, she's not old enough to work. Yes, yeah, she is. My mommy had me working at five, six years old at the hotel, taking out trash. You should have seen it. Pastor Marco, he was like, he was 16. We're 10 years apart. So imagine this, Pastor Marco's 16, I'm six. He's driving, going to the dump in Fontana. Taking trash from my dad's restaurant, the hotel that he owned, motel that he owned. We worked. So I said, my daughter's how old? She can work. So I look at all my friends. Who wants to, who, who hire my daughter? So one of our own members, they own, a, they own a printing company on Perfect Love Clothing called Mondo Up. I said, Mondo, how am I hire my daughter a couple days a week? What about homework? She'll figure it out. She'll figure it out. Because that's how we were raised. We don't get stuff for free. We work. Go to work. Look at your neighbor. Go to work. Go to work. So my daughter now, she's 15. She goes in three days a week. And she works part time. So she makes half the cost. I said, I'll, I'll cover half, but you have to cover half. We'll cover half the insurance, but you're going to have to cover half the insurance because nothing in life is free. We need to talk on work a little bit more. People get started about work. All right. So number one, mommy taught me how to serve God, how to serve. She taught us, me and Marco, Pastor Marco, how to never give up. Number three, my mom taught me how to share my faith with everybody. My mama was a soul winning machine. Mark 16, 15, he told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. There wasn't a place we would go if my mama wouldn't talk about Jesus. Everywhere we go, she embarrassed me when I was a kid. Said, mama, stop it. And she was the old school fire and brimstone. she tell you straight up, how you doing with God? I'm okay. There is no okay. Do you have Jesus? Well, what do you mean? No, have you accepted Jesus in your heart? No. Well, you're going to hell if you don't receive Jesus. If she taught a class on witnessing today, it'd be, it'd be a whole different story. She went, she went after the throat, man. We'd be in the supermarket. We'd be everywhere. You're going to hell if you don't give your life to Jesus. She did it with love. But you know what happened? She had, Christian, she had like an a urgency inside of her. Kind of like, you, you got it in you too. You always, you're always saving all kinds of souls, Mark. She's like, she was like, you just, it's like an urgency. Like if I, if I don't tell this person about Jesus, this might be their last 24 hours. 
See, I, I really believe this. If we really believed in hell, let me say this again. If we really believed in hell, man, we would go nuts telling people about Jesus every second of the day. But I think some of us, hell is still like a metaphor. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's real. You know, why would God send anyone to hell? And all, the, all these things that people come up with. I, I was talking to a, another religion the other day. They were saying, no, this is hell. Hell's here on earth. There is no such thing as hell. There is no such thing as that. Do you know that Jesus talked about more about hell than he did heaven? Look, at, look it up when you got time. Look at Matthew, Mark, Luke. He talked more about hell than... My mom taught me that. She taught me an urgency that when I'm in a conversation, somehow, some way, let's get it to the cross. Talking about money, that's fine. Get it to the cross, Robert, by the end of this conversation. We're talking about business, that's fine. Get it to the cross, Robert, by the end of the conversation. You're talking about school, that's great, but get it back to the cross. You're talking about sports, that's great, but get it back to the cross your last five minutes. That's why we give altar calls here every service. In every service, people are getting saved because it's all about souls. She taught us, number four, mommy taught me how to pray. She taught Marco, Pastor Marco, how to pray. Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. A lot of us, we're not experiencing peace like we should because we're not spending enough time praying. Because when we pray, we release it to God. And my mom, man, she was a prayer warrior. Um, let me give you some examples. She would hear God all the time. The name of the church, you know where it came from? came from mama. She seen a cross and like this big arrow shooting up to the sky in one of her prayer times with the Lord. And she's she, and she seen John 14, 6. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And she seen like this cross shooting up in it. And it had the words, Jesus is the way. She's, oh my gosh, she's the way, the way, the way. She calls Marco. I got the name of the church. Something about the way. That Jesus is the way. Mama, where did you get this? I was just hanging out with Jesus and he gave me a vision of the church. Gave me the vision of the name. This building, she saw this years back in a dream. Take a look at this one minute clip. Do you got that? I think she was preaching on this stage one of her last times. And she talks about how she's seen this building in a dream. Take a look at Mama Carmen. Night. I'm one of those that dream every night. You see this building here, changing the topic, topic a little. God showed me this building here way before they even started their ministry. And uh, I said, Michael, God showed me, gave me a, a building in the dream. Told them exactly. And they would move from one place to the other. I said, it's not that. It's not, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. It's a huge building, and it has a freeway nearby where I'm driving, and I see the building the way. And um, the day he brought me here to show me, Mom, this is the building that we're trying to get. And I said, you're going to get it because that's the building that God showed me. That's the and here we are. And here we are. Praise God. But Jesus, in this vision... Wow. I wonder, I wonder what visions we could get. I wonder what secrets of heaven we could get if we just spent a little time with God. I know, moms, all of us, we're busy. My mom was like you, man. She, she was just a superstar rock star. I don't know how she did it. Just like a lot of moms in here. She'd be the first one up, praying and reading the Bible, screaming and yelling at devils. Then she would run to the kitchen and make me breakfast. Or even something to go for breakfast every morning. Okay? Then after that, growing up, the business came after when I was a little kid. She was a teacher. So she would, she would wake up, pray, hang out with God, get these dreams, and then go do that. And then, and then go to work and teach. She was a full-time teacher. She taught here in Ranch Cucamonga. 
Ontario. She taught English as a second language, a full-time teacher. She was your teacher substitute, was she? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, she did that, right? She did that. Then she would come home and miraculously dinner would be made. I don't know how it happened. Later on, she dealt my dad with business, and then I played baseball. She never missed one of my baseball games. But she always made it a point to pray. Don't get so busy and we're not praying. I'm talking to me. We get so busy. God wants to give you a message. He wants to give you something. I want, just give me five minutes. Give me diez minutos. Give me quince minutos. I'm speaking Spanish because our Spanish pastors are here. So, dame cinco minutos. Dame veinte minutos. Orar. Just pray. Give me some time and watch what God will do. Mama taught us how to pray. And the last, the last thing, mom taught me how to honor and submit to authority. She taught us how to submit to authority. She submitted to every church she went to. She submitted to every pastor she was under. She committed to every principal and boss at school, everyone. She never left a, a, a church or a job on bad terms because she didn't like the boss or she didn't like the pastor. She stuck it out. She honored that pastor. She would bring the, the wives over the churches to eat several times and help them with, with their rent and help them with their mortgage. And she would honor leaders. Hebrews 13, 7, obey your leaders and submit to them for they are keeping watch over your souls. As those who will have to give an account, let them do this with joy and not groaning. My mom taught us how to submit to leaders, how to submit to authority. If I dared, if I dared come home and say that my teacher didn't like me, why you got a D, Robert? And I tried it. I tried it. Mama, that teacher don't like me, mama. Shut up. No, mama, she picks on me. She calls, no, 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 you respect that teacher. You honor that teacher in that class. You got a bad grade because you're just lazy. She wouldn't let me blame anyone. Wouldn't let me blame anyone. And I pray today you would get some of these things today. You'd be a person of prayer. And this is for everyone, not just a much for everybody. We pray. We serve God. We serve people. If you're not involved in ministry, man, sign up. You're missing out. We're getting ready to launch like three churches June 27th. June 27th, simultaneously, um, Kenya, Africa is relaunching. They're starting officially the Wayroad Outreach in Kenya, Africa. June 27th, seven weeks away or six weeks. Pomona is launching June 27th, six weeks away. Tijuana, Mexico, seis semanas. One day, we're launching out three churches. There's a lot of action here. Get involved in the action. I'm telling you, you'll never be the same ever again. And be a person of prayer. I love it. You guys learned something today? Thank you, Mama, for teaching us. We're going to end with prayer in a moment. And we're going to have a time where some of our workers are going to be up here. And we'd love to pray with you. We're having fun here today. It's a great time. But, yeah, Mother's Day it could be tough. Maybe you lost someone like I did. You lost your mom. She's not, she's not here. And it's just tough. And um, you're going through something right now. And you're saying, this is a good day, but man, Pastor, I'm struggling. Finances are struggling. My marriage is struggling. Please, come get prayer. We, we don't end any. I know it's Mama's Day. We're going out to eat. We're, you, boom, we're out of here. But get some prayer. You're struggling. with Maybe you're struggling with an addiction. Do you know Jesus could set you free? If you're addicted to cigarettes, you don't have to leave that way. If you're having an alcohol problem, you say, man, I just can't stop. I know, we can't stop on our own. Jesus can set you free right here today in, in 30 seconds. Yeah. So, whatever you need, any kind of prayer. Maybe it's a bad report from the doctor. I mentioned it earlier. Someone's sick in your, your family. Whatever it is, please. Our altar team will be up here. We would love to pray with you. But here's the most important thing that we could ever talk about. In one day. Here's the most important topic we could talk about. Is your eternity. It's the greatest thing we could ever talk about. Is your eternity. So for 30 seconds, let's talk about your eternity. Where are you going if you die? I just did a funeral a couple days ago. And I asked the family, I said, this is tough. 
I would like to see any, anyone pass away. And I asked the family, you know, where are you going if you died? Because we're all going to pass away one day. Where are you going? Have you put your faith in God? Well, yeah, pastor, I go to church every week. That's good. But it's not about a church per se. It's not about a church. It's not about a religion. You're not, we're not going to go to heaven. Jesus is going to ask, hey, why should I let you in? You can't say this. Man, I was the best Pentecostal anybody ever saw. Pentecostal, who? Uh, wrong answer. Oh, man, my family were Catholics. We got dedicated as a baby. There's nowhere in the Bible that says this. If you're a Catholic, you go straight to heaven. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. Baptist, Methodist, you could go on and on. Lutheran and Presbyterian. And you can name all these different religions. It's, that's not what saves us. What saves us is a relationship with Jesus. So here it goes. If you would like to be forgiven of all your sins, say, man, that's a heavy thing. Yeah, can God forgive me? Yeah, he can forgive you of everything you've ever done. He paid the price on the cross. He already did it. He paid the penalty of sin. He did it on the cross. So if you would like to be forgiven of every sin you've ever committed, if you would like to make sure if you die today, you would go straight to heaven. Sebastian, what are you doing, trying to scare me I'm going to die? No, we're all going to die. The Bible says we're like vapor here one second and we're gone the next. If you were to die today, where are you going? Maybe you've been backslidden. You're saying, I, Pastor, I, I, I know God. I just need to come back to him today. I just need a fresh start. This is you too. Let's get a fresh start with God. So if you would like to be forgiven of all your sins, if you would like to make sure if you die today, you would go straight to heaven. If you want to place your faith in Jesus... Or you say, Pastor, I just need to come back. I need a fresh start. I need a fresh start today. If that is you, I'm going to ask you to slip your hand up when I count to three. Pastor, what am I raising my hands to? I want Jesus. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to put my faith on what he did on the cross. Pastor, I need a fresh start. I need to come back to him today. I need a new start right now. That's me. On a count of three all across this auditorium, don't let nothing hold your hand down. You're watching us online. Don't miss this opportunity. You're at work. You're in a vehicle. You're on vacation somewhere. Don't pass this by. This, God is speaking to you as well right there in your living room, right there in your, your office space, right there. Every, I'm going to count to three. Here it goes. Raise your hands. I want Jesus. I want to be forgiven. I, 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 need a, I need a fresh start. That's me. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. Raise them, raise them, raise them. See a couple of kids over here. I see a hand there. I see a hand there. I see you, young man, right here in the front row. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. I see two hands there. I see one, two, three, four hands there. Another hand there, another hand there. I see a couple kids, teenagers. I see a hand there, I see a hand there. I see you, ma'am, right there. I see you right there. Yeah, I see you waving to me. I see you, sweetie, right there. Or both of you guys raising it together. I see you, I see you right there. I see you, sweetie. I want everyone to stand up, everyone in the whole auditorium. Now, those who just raised your hands, you're saying, that's me, I need God right now. All those that raised your hands, I want you to come forward. Come meet me here in the front, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer today of salvation. A prayer to receive God. A prayer to maybe rededicate your life. Come on now. This is the most salvation we've ever had at 9 o'clock on a Mother's Day. Biggest one. Last year we didn't even have a Mother's Day. 
Right? Last year we were at home. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. Who's all here? 38, 39. All everybody? 40, 41, 42, 43 people giving their life to Jesus right now. Another one, 44. 44, another one. Give a round of applause. 44 coming up. Another one, you coming down, young man? You coming? No, okay. Good job. Every head bow, every eyes closed right now. Every head bow, every eyes closed. You're at home, you're online. Say this prayer with us. God will meet you right there where you're at. Every head bow, every eyes closed. You're at your seat. You're at your seat and you're thinking, man, I need to get right with God. I need a fresh start. It's okay. Just say the prayer right there at your seat. God's going to touch you right now, okay? Every head by every eyes closed. Repeat this prayer after me. To receive or to rededicate Jesus into your life. You guys ready? Every head by every eyes closed. Say, Jesus, I repent. I receive forgiveness of all the sins I've committed. Jesus, I place my faith in you. I believe over 2,000 years ago, you died on the cross for the penalty of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am your servant. I am your disciple. Holy Spirit, fill me. And God, I ask you, set me free from all my bad habits, all my addictions, all my hurt, all my pain. Set me free. Today I am saved. I am born again on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give all those a round of applause.